Now looking at amine reactions. Our first amine reaction is specifically the reaction as a proton base. So we can start off with our amine acting as a base. We have our proton acid, so HX or some sort of, uh, this is just something with the halogen. And then what this is going to form is ammonium salt. So let's just look at how this can behave. Uh, specifically, something to know is that amines can act as either a nucleophile or a base. So let's look at the first type where it's the reaction of an amine acting as a nucleophile. So our electrophile would be uh, this alkyl halide, and then we have our nucleophile, which is our amine. So I have that uh, nitrogen or these electrons are going to react with or attack uh, that methyl group. And then that's going to attach on, as we see here. Next, this leaving group is going to leave, and that forms that ammonium salt. Next, we could have our reaction um, of an amine as a proton base. So this will act as our base, as we saw previously. And these electrons are then going to protonate and grab that hydrogen. This leaving group would leave, and we once again form that ammonium salt, which we saw previously. The main difference here is just the fact that this actually started off with an alkyl halide, and this add, this was an acid that we used instead. So this added an R group, this did not, this only attached on a hydrogen. So as we kind of just saw there, alkylation is uh, something that we can do here with amines, where we're, we're gonna start off with an amine and we have a primary halide. All we're doing is we're attaching an additional alkyl group, which we see here. So. For example, if we were to have our amine and that primary halide, well, I see that I have three methyl groups here. So because there's an excess amount, I'm actually attaching three methyl groups onto that nitrogen, and that forms that ammonium salt. What's occurring here is the nitrogen is acting as our nucleophile. That's going to attack the carbon. And then our bromine would leave since that is our leaving group. And then that's how we form that salt. Uh, something to kind of just know is that the salt can become deprotonated since it can act as a nucleophile and then it can start reacting with another molecule. Remember with alkylation, that was a problem when we were looking at uh, Friedel-Crafts alkylation where multiple alkylations can occur. So this is kind of the same concept there where it can continue reacting over and over and we can get multiple products. So what we can see here is that this would continue. So this was our salt, so the product from uh, this primary amine now became a secondary amine, or salt of a secondary amine. Then we can keep going, and it can react with another molecule. And let's say I had a, another primary amine here, and I do have that salt. Well, this is going to react, and it's then going to form a secondary amine. And then I now have an additional um, salt here. And then this would keep going, right? The alkylations just can continue reacting, and then I have that secondary amine, and I can then add another alkyl halide, and that would then form a tertiary, a salt of a tertiary amine versus that secondary amine that I formed previously. So this is something that can occur with alkylation, uh, specifically for amines. So that was alkylation. Now going on to alkylation, uh, what we would see here is once again we have amine, and we have an acid chloride, and we have pyridine. So all that's happening is these two are combining essentially, where you see the acid chloride, that carbonyl group is here, and then that's going to combine with our amine to then form an amide. An example of this is here, where I'm going to take this carbonyl group and the R group, and that's going to stay, and then that uh, NH and that phenyl group are also going to attach, and that's how we form that amide. So the overall process of alkylation for amines looks like this, where we're going to start off with a nucleophilic attack, so our amine is behaving as a nucleophile. That's going to attack that carbon. This is then going to form uh, the, the ion here of oxygen. So in this case, I would attach on that nitrogen, and then I kind of am starting to form that salt. From here, I now have a good leaving group, so a leaving group is going to leave that chlorine, right? That's our good leaving group. And then electrons would then regenerate that uh, carbonyl carbon, which is here. From there, pyridine is going to come in and deprotonate this hydrogen. Electrons then get donated to this nitrogen to then make this uh, neutral. Because this is, right now we have that salt, but we want this to be an amide since this is alkylation. And then the final step is really just this. These electrons go onto the nitrogen. It's now neutral. And we started off with 
essentially what we wanted, right? We, we wanted to get that carbonyl carbon and that R group here and the nitrogen and that, R, that other R group here. So that's how we form the amide. Next, we could also see uh, sulfur being involved here where I do have amine and then I am adding this chloride. From there, I'm just going to form uh, this type of amide just involving sulfur. So for example, uh, essentially all you're doing here is, and actually let's just look back to the beginning and see what are we adding on. So this chlorine is being replaced with uh, this portion of the amine. So that NH is here, that's attaching onto the sulfur and the remaining portion of this. And then that R, that R prime group, this also should have been R prime right there. So this is where what we're saying. So chlorine is essentially leaving. This is going to attach on. We lose a hydrogen since that is going to uh, go to the chlorine and form that acid. So we'll see the same concept here in this example where this chlorine is going to leave. This is going to lose a proton and NH is going to combine here with the sulfur and form, uh, and then this entire R group is also gonna attach on. So that's the main concept here. If we wanted to look at the overall reaction, uh, this is what would take place. So we could either have a primary or secondary amine and that's going to attack that sulfur. And then chlorine is then going to leave since that is our leaving group. Um, and it also kind of displaces it since this is this needs to make room, right? Sulfur can only have so many bonds. So um, even though it does have an expanded octet, uh, this still needs to make room for this larger attack of that amine. So this needs to make room for it. So chlorine then leaves. Then it's going to look like this. Next thing is that we're going to add base. Uh, there's going to be deprotonation here where this base is going to remove that hydrogen. Electrons then go back onto that nitrogen, making it neutral. And that's how we form that type of amide, specifically with sulfur. Uh, and it's still the same concept that we said before, that really chlorine is just going away and that NH is attaching on and it's bonding with that sulfur. Moving on to a different type of reaction, the Hoffman elimination. And remember we went over eliminations way in the beginning when we talked about uh, E2. So this is an E2 elimination. Uh, and note that amines can get converted into an alkene by elimination reaction. So that's what we're doing here. We're going from an amine to an alkene. So there are gonna be two things that we look at here. Uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is this type of methylation of an amine. So what I wanna go over is just an amino group is converted to a good leaving group. So it starts off as a poor leaving group, then it gets converted to a good leaving group uh, via this uh, methylation of an amine and then it gets converted into a quaternary ammonium salt, which then can leave as a neutral amine. Okay, so let's just go over this. It starts off with our amine here, where it's a poor leaving group. We now add a, uh, an excess amount of an alkyl halide. Then as that attaches on, since essentially all that's happening is these hydrogens are going away, we're now attaching those three methyl groups. This is now a quaternary ammonium salt. Now that that's better since it is charged, it is a good leaving group, it wants to go away. What happens next is that we're gonna convert this uh, to a hydroxide salt. So all I would do is add silver oxide. This is now going to change. And the only difference really is just this iodine then goes away and combines with the silver and then we form hydroxide here. Another way of looking at this uh, from that step, seeing how hydroxide is going to take place um, so we already formed that quaternary salt, and then what's happening is that uh, deprotonation is occurring here with that base. It's removing the hydrogen, electrons then go here to form, and we're now forming um, our alkene in this step. So this was after we already converted this to a um, quaternary ammonium hydroxide or hydroxide salt. Uh, so in this case, I know, as mentioned, deprotonation occurs, electrons then donate here to form that alkene. This leaving group is now a good leaving group and it leaves. So it's going to look like this and we apply heat since this is elimination. So our byproduct is going to be uh, this, nitrogen with those three methyl groups and water. And then our main product is just that alkene. Something to note is, remember we went over Zaitsev's uh, reactions or just products in general, where that favored, that type of elimination favored the most substituted alkene, that was our major product. 
And then the minor products, of course, were the ones that were less substituted. For Hoffman, it's the complete opposite. So the major product is going to be the one that is less substituted or the least substituted alkene. And that's what we see here. In this case, there is no other option, but we will see some examples that you'll be asked to find all the products and see and determine which one's the major and minor. If this is the Hoffman elimination, then our major product will be the least substituted alkene, okay? So know that. So let's do an example where I'm gonna start off with just our amine. I'm gonna add that excess amount of methyl uh, iodide and I know that the first thing I wanna do is just change this poor leaving group to a good leaving group. And then I know also I'm, I'm also adding uh, silver oxide and water to then form that hydroxide salt. So that's our first step, that's what we would do here, uh, just changing this to from a poor leaving group to a good leaving group. Now if I apply heat, what happens next is since I have that hydroxide, that's now going to deprotonate this hydrogen. These electrons can then go to this bond and that forms my first possible product. These, uh, this leaving group now leaves since it is a good leaving group. And our first potential product would look like this where the double bond would be here. Okay, but I could have done something different. Instead of this proton, I could have grabbed this proton. So that's the potential other possibility that I would see. I have product two, so I could have the OH pro deprotonate this hydrogen. These electrons go here, and this is the location of that alkene. And of course, this good leaving group leaves. So this is the difference here with the Hoffman product where this is the least substituted alkene, and because this is Hoffman elimination, this is going to be the correct answer or the major product, product one, because this is the least substituted alkene, meaning this alkene doesn't have that many substituents on it versus this one, right? This one's in the middle. This is going to actually have uh, multiple substituents or multiple, I wouldn't say substituents per se, but multiple carbons attached to it. So because of that, that's Zaitsev's product. And that is the most substituted alkene, which is actually the minor product in this case. Moving on to a different type of elimination, the COPE elimination. So with this one, we would start off with, uh, once again, an amine. And I would have either hydrogen peroxide or a per acid. And I would get something like this. And uh, at this step, after I've added oxygen and uh, protonated this, this nitrogen, what essentially happens is that a lot of things are going on all at once, but this is protonating itself where it grabs a hydrogen, these electrons then form that alkene, and this leaving group leaves. And we formed, once again, another alkene. And once again, this does favor that idea of the Hoffman elimination, even though I know this is the Cope elimination, but the idea that it forms a Hoffman product, just meaning that uh, it would give us the least substituted alkene. That is what is uh, meant by a Hoffman product versus a Zaitsev's product, where the Zaitsev product gives us uh, the most substituted alkene and the Hoffman product gives us the least substituted alkene. That's the main thing that it does. It uh, doesn't mean that it always has to be the Hoffman elimination to do that. As we see here, COPE can also be that, that type where a COPE elimination can give you a Hoffman product, just meaning the least substituted alkene is our major product. So let's look at this a little bit more in detail. Uh, so this type of elimination is one step. So this all happens in one step where the amine oxide, which is this, attacks or acts as our base and our leaving group at the same time. So that's kind of something that we haven't really seen too much of. It's going to act as a base and a leaving group because it deprotonates this to then form that alkene and then it leaves, okay? So that's all happening all at once to give us an intermediate step versus the Hoffman elimination, which we didn't see that intermediate step. Uh, and then next, this is then gonna just give us that least substituted alkene. Another type of um, oxidation or reaction for amines is going to be oxidation. <laughs> so I can start off with a primary amine, and then I can apply some sort of oxidizing agent that's then going to give me a uh, hydroxyl amine, where all I did was instead of this hydrogen, now it turned into an alcohol group. If I oxidize this again, now I am changing this 
I'm removing a hydrogen and I'm removing that alcohol group to form that double bonded oxygen. And then from there, I, if I oxidize this further, I can then form that uh, sort of nitro group in this case. Now, if I start off with a secondary amine and add hydrogen peroxide or some sort of oxidizing agent, then this is going to give me a hydroxyl amine uh, and a byproduct of water. And lastly, if I have a tertiary amine and I oxidize this with uh, peroxide, then I know that I would form an amine oxide. So the only thing that's happening is that uh, we're just adding on that oxygen. The next type of reaction allows us to go from a primary amine to a disonium salt. So in this case, I'm adding um, NaNO2, and then all I'm doing is I'm, like I mentioned, I'm just going from a primary amine to a di disonium salt. And then I could also see instead of an R group, I could also have, this just refers to an aromatic ring or something that's aromatic. So I know that AR, I could have either had like a benzene ring here attached, and that would have been the same sort of processor reaction and using the same reagents. How this is going to work is we're going to start off with our primary amine. Our primary amine is going to attack the strong electrophile. And then once that attacks and attaches on, we're then going to deprotonate this with water. So water is going to deprotonate this hydrogen, electrons go onto the nitrogen, and now we're at this step. So we added on that double bonded oxygen and we removed a proton. The next part of this is going to be a proton transfer. So this oxygen is going to protonate and grab that hydrogen. And then now this is going to be stabilized by resonance. So we added a proton to that oxygen. The next step is that we're going to deprotonate that uh, NH group. So electrons are then gonna gra grab this hydrogen. Electrons go onto the nitrogen to make it neutral. And then it does give us uh, this step here where now we have, we remove that proton, it's no longer there. And this is what we would get. One more step here. So part three is that we're gonna protonate this. Uh, so I'm going to grab a hydrogen here. Now that this grabbed a hydrogen, that makes it water, which is a good leaving group. So water is then going to leave. And then I'm going to form a triple bond here to make this more stable. So these electrons are gonna donate here, making this a triple bond. And that's how we form that uh, disonium salt. Next, we could see uh, different reactions with those disonium salts, but specifically with uh, that aromatic ring if that's attached. So this is a, just a continuation of those types of reactions after we already created uh, that disonium salt. So after I have that disonium salt, I could apply, let's say, uh, this, is, this is heat and acid, so maybe some, for some form of hydrolysis. This would form a phenyl. So all that's happening is that this essentially is completely going away and it's being replaced with, uh, remember hydrolysis allows us to form alcohols. So then that just forms an OH here. And there are several different reactions that we might see with this. So I would have created that disonium salt already. And then what we can see is this first one where this is my new reagent. And what happens there? Well, this completely gets replaced with chlorine and that's now I have this as my as my product and then I could also see well what if I had bromine instead of chlorine well then this would change to bromine instead of chlorine and continuing on with uh, a nitrile well if I had CN here this would go away and now I have my CN here next I could also see well what if I have fluorine so if this is my new reagent this completely goes away and now this is just fluorine attached to that aromatic ring. If this was Ki, then this changes to an iodine. If we had uh, this acid, then I know that this is then just going to change to a hydrogen. This would completely go away. And then lastly, if I had something like this, if I had another aromatic ring, then this is a tiny bit different where I see that this is going to remain, but we're gonna lose one of the bonds. So now this is a double bond attached to that other aromatic ring. All right, so moving on to what if we had a ketone and an aldehyde, that's what we started off with, and we're trying to form an amine. So now going to amine synthesis, well, I can start off with that ketone or aldehyde, and I'd see if I add uh, this NH2 and that alcohol group, 
and acid, that's going to form that oxime. And then from there, I then can reduce this to then form a primary amine. For example, I can once again just have that ketone. I then add these reagents. From here, this oxygen is going away. Nitrogen is attaching on to form that oxime. And then from there, I can reduce this. Uh, and then at that step, all I'm doing is just replacing this NOH with that uh, amine or that NH2, and that just forms my primary amine in that case. There's another way that I can now form a secondary amine instead of a primary. I'm still gonna start off with a ketone or an aldehyde. Now I'm actually adding a primary amine, an acid, that gives me an imine, and then next I can still do some sort of reduction. And then from that reduction step, that gives me that secondary amine. So for example, this is, this is a ketone, I have that primary amine with that phenyl group, and then I have acid from here, this removes, and I just add that N and that phenyl group on top. From there, I'm gonna reduce this, and uh, just pretty much reducing this double bond, and now I just form that secondary amine. I can also form a tertiary amine, starting off with ketones and aldehydes. So I can start off with a ketone or an aldehyde. Now, instead of a primary amine, like we saw previously, I'm now gonna use a secondary amine. So you can kind of see the pattern there. So now I'm gonna use a secondary amine in acid. This is gonna give me a salt. And then from there, reduction is gonna take place once more, and I'm gonna get a tertiary amine. So if you notice, I'm really just kind of changing this step, like I'm cutting that, that double bond, uh, and I'm replacing this with that N, R, and R, those two R groups on top. Reduction is then gonna allow us to remove one of those bonds and then stay like this, okay? So that's the general concept if you're not too familiar uh, with how this is gonna take place. That's all I want you to know is that this oxygen is going to go away, nitrogen is going to attach on, and then we have this salt. From there, reduction is going to allow us to break one of those bonds, and it's going to form that tertiary amine. For example, it could look something like this, where I'll have that ketone, and then we have our secondary amine, right? This is two carbon groups. And then from there, it's going to look like this, where I have those two carbons, uh, those two methyl groups, and then from there, reduction occurs, one of these bonds break, and this is my tertiary amine. Next, we're gonna see a different type of synthesis uh, to go from an acid chloride, and we would start off with an amine as well. Uh, so this is gonna allow us, if we use pyridine, this is gonna allow us to get to an amide. From there, we'll use reduction to then allow us to get to a different type of amine, okay? So essentially what you're doing is you're kind of adding more carbon groups or more R groups. So we saw that this wasn't initially there with the starting materials. So these are essentially combining to form that new amine, and it just has a longer carbon chain. For example, I would see something like this. We start off with an amine, an acid chloride. Pyridine is gonna allow us to get to an amide. And then from there, I'm going to reduce this and get that additional uh, carbon chain that I see here. Because we attached on two carbons which now I also see that here, one and two carbons, that's what I also attached on. So that's the whole process of this, is if you see, oh, I have, uh, I one, I have an amine, and I have more, more carbons than I started off with initially, with that initial amine, well, I know that this must, this alkylation must have taken place because I now have these two carbons that are attaching on. We could also do alkylation of ammonia, where we start off with an alkyl halide, and then we have an excess amount of ammonia, and then from there that forms our amine. So all I'm doing essentially is this. I'm allowing this to act as our leaving group, right, because it is a halide or halogen, it does leave. And then now this NH3, or really NH2, is going to attach on here and form that amine. It's gonna look something like this where we have uh, CH2 and bromine, so bromine is going to leave, and then NH2 is going to replace that bromine, and that's all that happens. Another type of synthesis is the Gabriel synthesis, where we would start off with an alkyl halide, and we are going to get to a primary amine. So we have this huge reagent here. Uh, that's kind of like your giveaway that this is the Gabriel synthesis. And all that's going to happen is that this nitrogen is going to react or combine with this R group, which we see here, 
Now we're going to kind of reduce all of this or remove this whole chunk. And the whole process is that we're now gonna get a primary amine. So that the main concept with this is just this, this uh, halogen is going to be replaced with that nitrogen group. And that's how we form that amine. It just allows us to attach that R group that we have initially on that alkyl halide. Next type is reduction of azides. So I can start off with an alkyl halide, and then I'm trying to get to, again, a primary amine. So I would have, um, I would start off with using that sodium uh, nitride, and that would then form that alkyl azide. From here, and this is just the three nitrogens that we see there, this is going to leave. And then from there, I'm going to reduce this down so this completely reduces to that NH2 or that primary amine. So I can see something like this where I start off with that al alkyl halide. I then apply this reagent to allow us to get to that alkyl uh, azide. From there, I can reduce this down either by using this reagent or uh, this reagent with this catalyst. And then from there, that just allows this to be reduced to that, that primary amine. The next type is reduction of nitro compounds. So I can start off with something that has a nitro compound. Remember that NO2 is that nitro group, and then I can form an amine. So I would have uh, H2N, one of these catalysts, or I could have an active metal, so any one of these, and acid. So for example, it's gonna make more sense once I show you. So let's say if this was my nitro compound and I used an active metal and acid, and that then changes to uh, ammonium. And then as I have that ammonium, I could also apply this with base. And that base then reduces this down or removes that, that hydrogen essentially, it deprotonates that hydrogen, and it turns it into NH2. So that's the overall process. Any one of these would work, either H2 with a catalyst or the active metal with an acid. The next type is nucleophilic aromatic substitution, where this allows me to go from an alkyl uh, halide to an amine. So I would start off though with an amine and that alkyl halide. So AR, remember, just refers to the aromatic ring. And then uh, what we need to do first is to actually activate the aromatic ring. So this does go back to nucleophilic aromatic substitution as we spoke before about where I would have, for example, it's gonna be a lot easier to see it here, where I would have that, um, in this case, a primary amine or just an amine, and I would then have um, this cyclic ring or aromatic ring, and I know that what's being replaced is this halogen is going to leave, and it's going to remove a proton. From there, these two are essentially going to combine, okay? And that's, that's actually really it. That's all that's happening, is this allows us to activate the ring. These are going to combine, so now we have that nitrogen and that added that R group, and we do have whatever was remaining initially on that starting material. That's how we have that amine that's being made. Another way that we can get an amine, specifically a primary amine, is by starting off with the nitrile. So we can have a reduction of nitrile specifically where we use either one of these reagents. And this allows us to go from a nitrile to a primary amine. And if you'll know, all we're doing is we are changing this nitrile to this uh, amine portion here. So there is something to note that we could actually start off with an alkyl halide, add a cyanide, and then from there, this actually gives us an additional carbon. So if we didn't start off with a nitrile, we can start off with an alkyl halide. Just note that when we do add that CN, it does give us a new carbon here. And then after we add that reducing or, you know, whatever reducing agent, so this is another type of reducing agent, just that H2 and a catalyst. Well, then that allows us to change this CN to a CH2 and then that, that amine portion of it. So that's where that additional carbon comes from. It comes from the addition of that cyanide. But if we started off with just like something like this, where it already had the nitrile on it, then we reduce it. No additional carbons are there, right? This is the same carbon as this one. And then we just essentially add on that uh, amine group. All right, so you are ready to try these practice problems out for amine reactions. All right, so for this first one, uh, this is, remember, this is the Hoffman elimination where you are possibly gonna have multiple products, but you do have to be able to identify which is your major and your minor products. And of course, remembering what the Hoffman product and the Zaitsev's product refers to, and we'll go over that. So for this first one, let's just look at the overall process. 
as to what's going to happen. We're going to start off, uh, we have our amine, we start off with our amine, and I'm going to start off with this excess CH3. So we start off with that excess amount of our alkyl halide. Now, something to note is that this excess is actually telling us that we're going to add an additional uh, amount of methyl groups. And specifically, this already has one methyl group. Now, how many methyl groups will you add? Like, when do you know to stop? Well, three. Whenever you have an actual total of three methyl groups, that's it. So if this methyl group wasn't there, we would have added three methyl groups. But because there already is one, we're only going to add two methyl groups to then form a total of three, and that's what we had here. If there were two methyl groups, then we would have, I mean, you're really not going to see that since we typically want to have excess, but if you see two here, then it, you're just going to add one more to form three. And then from there, this also protonates that nitrogen. Uh, next, we're going to continue with the addition of this reagent and water. And when we do that, this is where we're going to see uh, where we can add that OH, or actually where we're going to deprotonate, right? So this, let's, let's actually look at the different ways since there are different products that we can have here. So the first way is I could have uh, deprotonated this hydrogen here on this carbon. So and I'm specifically looking at uh, the carbons that are around this nitrogen. So this is one of them. Okay, I'm going to remove this proton. And then since this proton gets removed, these electrons have to go somewhere. So they're going to be donated to then form our product uh, here. So this is going to be our alkene. And this is going to then jump off and that's, that's going to leave, which we have here. So okay, so far, so good. That was product one. Next, I can continue and I could have seen maybe there's a second product and I'm going to look at this carbon and pick one of the protons on this carbon here. So, okay, that's that's a possibility. Well, like I said, I'm looking at the carbons that are near this nitrogen. So this proton or this, this OH group is going to grab that proton. Electrons then go back onto that bond and form that alkene. So this is another possibility. And of course, this jumps off and that's, that's what I show here. So that's one way. We still have one other way. So there are methyl groups attached to that nitrogen. So there are multiple things. One, we have uh, the methyl groups that are, here's two and here's one more, right? Because this initially told us, um, the initial question did tell us that there was a CH2, so CH2, and then three methyl groups, one methyl group here and two others here. So what I can do now is use that methyl group at the end and see, okay, what else could happen? Well, this OH group can then grab this proton, electrons then can move here, and then we formed just this really small uh, alkene since where do everything else here is just hydrogens, right? That's where we get all the hydrogens. And then this leaves off and this is what we would get. So this would completely leave, right, this entire, this entire structure. And then we would have such a small alkene, which is actually the major product here. So our Hoffman product, remember, that's going to be the alkene that's formed that is the least substituted, which is this case. This has really no sub substituents, really. So, but then versus uh, something like this, this is actually the most substituted alkene out of all three of them. This is going to be our Zaitsev's product because this is the most substituted alkene. So this would be our major product, this would be our minor product, and this would still be a possible answer, but they're really just going to ask you, uh, what's your Hoffman product, what's your Zaitsev product, but I still would include what this is. Just know that this would have been your Hoffman product, this would have been your Zaitsev product, and then this is still one of your possible products. Number two is the COPE elimination. So this still is going to follow Hoffman, uh, that Hoffman elimination process where we will have a Hoffman product and that's going to be the least substituted alkene. But let's just start off with this reaction and see what's going to happen. So first things first is that we have to uh, protonate this nitrogen and add that and form that alk oxide ion here. So hydrogen peroxide is going to allow us to then add that oxygen with a negative charge and to protonate, protonate that uh, nitrogen group there. Now, let's just look at all the different possible products that we can have. So what's going to happen next is this is going to form an alkene. So electrons are going to grab the hydrogens or protons that are on this carbon. And as this protonates, this is going to uh, remove the electrons and then donate them here to form that alkene. And then this is also going to leave. So this, this chunk here is now formed here. It forms this sort of alcohol group. And then next, our alkene is now formed here. This methyl group remains. 
we're going to see another possibility. What if this oxygen wanted to grab these hydrogens? So from this methyl group, I just expanded that. So this removes that proton. These electrons go here to form that alkene. And then from there, well, which one is the most substituted alkene? Which one is the least substituted alkene? Well, this is going to be the most because this has that methyl group that has a substituent. So this is the most substituted alkene, making it the Zaitsev product. And then this one here is the least substituted alkene, making this the Hoffman product. Number three, all right, so there are multiple parts to this. Uh, the first part is going to be where we're gonna start off with that azide. So what's going to happen? Well, I'm just changing this bromine to N3 since that's what I'm adding. From there, this is my reducing agent. So, okay, I know that that's being reduced. So I'm now going to remove this and form that amine. And recall, this is that reduction of azides. So we start off with an alkyl halide. We then use this first reagent to form that, that azide, so alkyl azide. And then from there, this is my reducing agent to then form a primary amine, which is exactly the case here. Moving on to number four, where we start off with a ketone. And what am I gonna do? Well, this is the reduction of nitriles. Why? Because we can go from a ketone and then form that nitrile. And then we can reduce this down uh, two, because this is, this is our reducing uh, agent here. Well, then we can reduce this to a primary amine, which is exactly the case here. I'm going to start off with that first reaction. This is just going to change this to an alcohol group and a, a nitrile. So I added that, that cyanide. Then from there, I'm going to reduce this down. And OH is going to remain the same since it's not going to affect this alcohol. The only thing that this is going to reduce is uh, that, that cyanide or that nitrile there, and it forms uh, that amine. Now let's move on to synthesis questions. So go ahead and pause the video, try these questions out. Some of them may require multiple steps, some of them only may require one, but see if you can figure them out. All right, so for this first one, this goes back to possibly going into maybe benzene reactions, just looking at, hey, my starting material is a benzene ring, and Looking at this, this is in the para position to, to each other. So maybe I have to add something. Maybe I'm going to have to do some sort of uh, benzene reaction or some sort of, sort of aromatic substitution, right, that we saw before. Well, I'm going to start off with just adding this group here. And then I'll deal with, with doing this para. So I'm going to start off with just adding the alkyl group. And I have to think, how do I add an alkyl group to a benzene ring? Well, this goes back to the Clemenson reduction where I can add this group, so I could add a ketone, and then I can reduce it to an alkane, which this is all an alkane, right? This is an alkane here. This is one, two, three, four, so that's butanol. So that's the exact same thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to change this into an alkane by using the Clemenson reduction. So I'll start off with just adding that first step where just beware, this is the kind of the trickier part, sometimes students might add an additional carbon just by accident because they literally just kind of like copy paste this here where this is four carbons and you're gonna think, you know, oh, I'm going to actually add the same amount here, here, but that would be wrong because that would have given you an additional carbon. The reason for that is beware of, of the carbonyl carbon. That carbonyl carbon is still going to reduce and that's actually gonna be this carbon here. So account for that. You're, you're going to place one less carbon than you would essentially think of because of that carbonyl carbon. So that's why here I already have this is one, two, three, four. This is one, two, three, four. Next, this is going to attach on to the benzene ring. And this is everything that I use, right? These are all the reagents that I use to attach that ketone on. From there, I now have to reduce this. And this is just cleaving off this, this oxygen here, this double bonded oxygen. And it's now going to be uh, the same, the same uh, butanol group that we had before, where this is also CH2, and that's our CH2 that we have. So great, that, that handled the first part of this, where uh, this is just this alkane or alkyl group that I attach to the ring. Now I have to figure out how do I, I don't know how to just automatically add that amine. We didn't really cover that uh, for our, our benzene reactions. 
But what we did cover was we know that we could maybe do a nitro group, add a nitro group, and then I know that there's a way to then convert a nitro group to an amine. So nitration is the next step. And because this is in the para position, I know that, okay, that is also possible uh, since, that, since this is a para director. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. From there, I'm just going to add that NO2 by doing nitration. So I added this nitro group to be in the para location or para position. Finally, from here, I know I can convert a nitro compound to an amine by using one of these. So I can use H2 and a catalyst, uh, either any of these catalysts, or I can use an active metal and acid. So, and that, that allows me to get to an amine. So what I'm going to use, and it is commonly used, is iron and hydrochloric acid. So all I have to do from this point is change this nitro group to that amine, that NH2, and I'm done. And then you can rewrite it the same way as it was before. This is the same thing as the other. You could even like adjust this and kind of turn this and it is going to be the same uh, product. But that's, that's how we would get this product. So all of these, okay? So these are all the multiple steps that we're going to see. This first step here, or these first two steps was the Clemenson reduction. This was nitration going back to aromatic substitution. Uh, and then this last one was just converting this from a nitro compound to that amine. Moving on, okay. So this added something rather large here. We added a lot to this. So we went from this amine to this sort of funky looking thing. So we lost the hydrogen and we attached everything else here. Now, what's the reaction that we covered that could possibly allow us to do that? Well, I possibly can do this, where this adds this entire portion here, right? That, that sulfur attached to two different oxygens and it still gives me that amide. So this does allow me to go from an amine to that sulfon and uh, amide and I could also add an additional R group. So it has to be this one because here's my R group, here's that sulfur uh, double bonded to two different oxygens, and here's that, that NH that we see here. So yes, that's exactly what I'm gonna do, and all I have to do is essentially just add them together. Where I have my starting material, I now have to figure out what this would have been that I had to add together. So this wasn't there, that NH is accounted for here. And then I know that uh, chlorine must have been there since I asked to leave. And my R group is this benzene ring uh, attached to that, to that methyl group. So that was just one step there. Let's just look at what happened, just looking back at the mechanism to understand this further. Uh, so remember that our amine is going to reach out and join on to that sulfur. And I'm going to do the same thing with the reaction that we have here. So this nitrogen reaches out to the sulfur and attaches on as that chlorine leaves since halogens are good leaving groups. So that attaches on. Next, we're gonna come in with a strong base and we're going to, uh, that strong base is going to then deprotonate that hydrogen here since that's where that hydrogen goes. That's how it gets reduced from uh, two hydrogens to just one. So this OH is going to grab that hydrogen and I'll show that here. So this OH grabs that hydrogen electron to go back onto nitrogen to then make it neutral. And then of course our byproduct here, that chlorine is still in the mix there. So it is still there, uh, but the major product that we care about is this one. And that's just the general reaction that we would see. Number three, okay, so what did we do? We went from a benzene ring and then we went to this amide. How do we go from a benzene ring to an amide? Well, I know that we talked about uh, going from a nitro compound to an amine. So maybe we'll start there. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with one, forming that nitro compound, and then seeing how can I go from a nitro compound to an amine, and then that amine possibly to this amide. So, okay, uh, I can start off with nitration. I know that nitration allows us to literally just add that nitro compound or form that nitro compound. So I added that nitro group, from here, I can then do this whole process of going from a nitro compound to an amine by using any sort of combination of this really. Uh, a common one as mentioned was iron and HCl. So then that allows me to change this to that NH2. Not done just yet. So now I have to account for that carbonyl group and this R group. 
And remember, this is alkylation. So alkylation allows us to uh, combine an amine, which is this, and an acid chloride into that am amide. So that's exactly the case here where our R group is going to be this cyclic ring, so the cyclic ring. And then uh, then the rest of this, is, this is our acid chloride that we're adding. And then pritidine is obviously going to be what we're also using. Um, and then adding these two together, that now is our final step that allows us to form our product. So overall, we have three different steps here where this allows us to just form that nitro compound. This then allows us to change this to an amine and then this allows us to form, to combine an acid chloride and an amine into that amide.